I want to refine Horizon's core differentiating message. I don't have an answer for you right now, but I want the community to think about this because it's something that I'm thinking about and it's something the team's going to be thinking about and we definitely need input and help. The whole point of having a community here is so that you guys are, are directly participating in what's going on, not like being, say, just consumers of an end product. You know, you guys are here to be part of this project. And I would love to hear um, some thoughts. What I mean by this is, you know, there are plenty of high profile blockchain blockchains out there and cryptocurrencies where if you just mention the name uh, right away, it clicks with at least people that understand crypto, why they exist, what they're doing, very specifically what they're doing. So I want something very similar for us. And when we first launched Zencash, the idea was to dashify Zcash. That was the, the point of what we were doing. We've grown quite a bit since then, so we really need to revisit this. And it has to link to our mission, and we need to make sure that this ripples through to everything that we do as an organization. You know, so ZDF is distinct as a distinct organization in the Horizon ecosystem. Uh, so we also need to think how the different organizations and companies that are part of this ecosystem interact with each other. But what I mean by single sentence on why we exist, it, it has to explain our niche. And really, I'll throw out something just to start the conversation that I've been thinking of. And we're going to go much deeper, guys. Um, so don't just take this and run with it. Unless you love it, then, of course, provide your feedback. But the idea that I was thinking, just where I'm going with, with at least one suggestion, is um, we, we are building privacy that scales without compromising security. All right, so when I think about what we're doing with Zendu, uh, when I think about what we're doing with Snarks, this is, this is what's resonating to me. So we are making it really easy to deploy blockchains that come with extremely sophisticated privacy tools with extremely sophisticated security um, because of the way that Zendu is structured and the way that we're constructing the SNARP circuits. It is a very interesting, unique model in the market. And this is an idea. And of course, if this isn't resonating or if it's a bit of a mouthful, privacy that scales without compromising security, uh, we need to just think of something different, but it, it has to be something very succinct like this, and it has to resonate, and it has to permeate to everything that we do as an organization. And if we're doing something that is tangent, tangential to that or, or just not really related to it or orthogonal to it, God forbid, uh, we need to stop doing it. I will post uh, a great article by Brian Armstrong uh, in the Discord here. It's called, or you could just look it up on DuckDuckGo, uh, Coinbase is a mission-focused company. It's just a fantastic article that you wrote, uh, really specific to what they're doing as, as a company, their mission, and how they're structuring uh, their team to accomplish that mission. And some things resonated that I, for sure, would, would love to adopt with the foundation. And this is play as a championship team, uh, which means you have a commitment to quality at all levels. We talk about this all the time, and we have to be serious about it. Uh, and working as a team, not exalting individual rock stars. You know, this industry already has. Too many, uh, you know, divas, rock stars, people just that just think that they're amazing and projects exist because they're they're so cool and, and brilliant. Uh, we're, we need to go beyond that, and it, I think this is very clear with how we've been operating for for the you know, last three years now and, and everything that we talk about that we want to do. But we are building a machine, a machine that has extremely competent professionals that perform their piece of that machine, their piece of that puzzle that makes everything work properly, work better, more efficiently. Uh, and, and makes it scale. So we think through all, all, all these nuances about how we operate and be a company first. This is what Coinbase says, and Coinbase is a for-profit company. We're not. The, the Zen Blockchain Foundation is a non-profit company. So in our case, because we're a non-profit, we still need to think about, we're, we're not thinking about profit maximization, but we're thinking about what mission and functions are we trying to accomplish as a foundation and then we find everything that we're doing. So we should not be spending resources that are just not part of this very, very uh, simple construct. Uh, and some things that I was thinking with were uh, just as we've evolved and because we have multiple entities in this ecosystem, we have Horizon Labs, we have Pipeline Marketing, uh, and, and you know, hopefully, and I'll just say definitely, we will have others over time. So what I'm thinking with the foundation um, over time, this is how I'm viewing us as shaping the foundation is really to be the communication hub for the ecosystem. So community building, um, conveying information to the community, making sure that people understand why Horizon exists, what it's doing, amplifying message from any particular um, stakeholders within the ecosystem, just building that, that you know, single you know, source of uh, information and obviously many sources of information, but at least part of a mission for the organization should be really to 
act as a communication hub for the ecosystem. Uh, and then there are other things as well, like base science and technology, maintaining the core protocol. These are things that uh, we have very much taken on explicitly as a, as a foundation, and I don't see us changing that mission anytime soon. So that's where we're focusing. And then we need to just make sure that everything that we're doing is consistent with that. And let me just read Coinbase's mission because it's so similar to ours and what we're thinking. So Coinbase's mission is to create an open financial system for the world. This means we want to use cryptocurrency to bring economic freedom to people all over the world. Well, does that sound familiar? Because this is so much in line with what we're doing. Hey, guys, I, I'm not reading Coinbase's article because I have some uh, you know, brewing partnership where we're, we're doing something with Coinbase at all. I, I just saw this great article that Armstrong wrote, and I wanted to convey uh, what it meant to me and what I think it'll mean to our organization. Um, so we need to hone in on our message. And that's the main point here. So think, everyone, please think about what you believe this resonating message should be. Why does Horizon exist? Why is that important? Why should anyone care? And how does this fit some niche that has, has a justification to exist in this very complex and often oversaturated industry that we're in? How are we better at something so clearly um, than, than everyone else in the market? And how are we going to grow this over time? Uh, okay. Let me see. The last thing that I wanted to talk about, and I know I'm uh, saying a bit here, but we do have a little bit of time. Rosario mentioned that we did uh, some competitive sidechain technical analysis or a review of, at least this morning, we went through one particular sidechain partner, or not partner, one, one particular sidechain project. And I have to say, the project is amazing. High, high level of respect for them. And at first glance, it is intimidating. Uh, it's really intimidating to see another project that's so popular generating so much FOMO right now with so many brilliant people working on it that's gaining so much traction, at least in terms of the, their coins price or the tokens price. Uh, they have lots of engineers, great messaging, awesome sounding products. Like what they're building seems like it makes complete sense. And I'd say that is intimidating. But when we actually dug under the hood and we started trying to really understand what is our competitive differentiation from this project um, so that we can hone in on what's important about what we're doing, what's different enough so that we can actually build a market around it, I started getting excited because Zendu honestly just scales much better, period. It, there's no question about that at all levels, from the economics to the technology, it just scales significantly better. And that, that could be an artifact of we are just the next generation sidechain project. Um, other projects that are popular in the market right now came before us. Just quite frankly, they, they were pioneers in sidechain technology before we entered, you know, even thinking about this type of uh, architecture for ourselves. In the way that we've architected Zendu and what Alberto and the engineering team are doing will be quite obviously just superior technology when it comes to scaling. We rely on cryptography instead of a limited number of validators. And we've mentioned this many times in many different circumstances or contexts. This will matter over time. So instead of any application developer coming to us and, and asking us to build a particular type of um, interoperability or logic into our system so that they can do something different, we have an open system that we're, we're opening up to the world. And we make sure that as long as you comply with the interoperability standard, you can do whatever you want on a sidechain. And the main chain doesn't have to know anything about it. And you don't have to rely on a marketplace for validators that could consist of a dozen or dozens of people that you just have to rely on, you have to trust, and you have to make sure that the economic incentives are so stacked in the favor of them not cheating the system that it doesn't break down economically. Um, so when I was looking at this, I was thinking there are tail risks on both sides of this type of thing. When you have a validator marketplace, uh, you could have a system where, where there's an auction environment where the cost of becoming a validator becomes so sufficiently high that it is much greater than the economic value being generated in the side chains that you're trying to validate for. And if that's the case, if you can't make as much resources by um, participating as a validator, then you're not going to be bidding so much for the right to become a validator. So there, there's an upper bound on the economics here. And the economics in these types of systems matter because you're counting on people to have such a massive stake in the system that they don't want to subvert it because the cost of subverting it is significantly higher than the benefits of subverting it. This is kind of blockchain decentraliz decentralization 101. And what Zendu gives us is cryptography instead of this type of economic system based on human beings that have you know, constraints and opportunities and a dynamically evolving marketplace. 
Uh, it's really cool. And I have to say, these technologies are, are really awesome to see evolve, but I'm betting on Zendu. There's also a lot of uncertainty around the token economics of some of these projects. And this is shocking to me. The supply paths for some projects that are extremely valuable in market value um, don't have defined supply caps. They don't even have a defined supply path. I'm not even talking about having a, you know, an inflationary system, with a defined inflationary system. I'm talking about one that's still you know, at the discretion of founders of a system, which is a little interesting that people would put so much money uh, at the discretion of some, some people where they could just literally change the rules next year. Um, that was shocking to me. And I think that it, it will also, I'm betting on Zendu because Zendu is based on Zen, which is already a very well-established cryptocurrency with a hard cap on supply, and that will not change. Um, and this play, we can tell you exactly the supply path for Zen over the next 150, 250,000 years. Um, that, that is the supply path. And other projects can't say that. So I'm not saying one's better than the other. In any other dimension other than one has much more certainty than the other. And I think that this will matter over time in our competitive posture. I'm not trying to say that we're just so amazing, discount the competition, because the competitors are fierce and the competitors are pretty awesome. Great human beings and they're doing they're brilliant people and doing fantastic work. Our system, though, I'll, I'll tell you another big thing that, again, a little surprising to me is uh, some systems are actually based, the economics are based on developers paying to use services on the network. Ours is the exact opposite. We're designing a system to pay developers to build on the network. Users, if they like a product and they want to participate in something, will be paying fees that accrue in parts to developers. So it's the complete opposite. It's flipping upside down the business model of one where you, want, you expect developers to be basically developers as your customer and your system that are paying you to use the system. Uh, and ours flips that upside down where we want developers to actually get paid. Uh, and this, this type of model can work. And this is what early dot-coms did was they used either VC or IPO proceeds to pay to acquire early users with the hope that these users, once they were into the platforms, would be willing to pay over time. Uh, and it didn't work for a lot of dot-coms. Uh, it, it is something that comes with risk and resources can become depleted by acquiring users whose contribution economically is lower than the cost of acquisition. Now, ours is opposite. So we actually will be paying developers to come in and we give them revenue that scales with usage. So it's the exact opposite in an economic model that, again, I'm betting on. So again, just to reiterate, I'm not saying that we are the best rock stars in the industry and everyone should discount the competition. That's exactly what I'm not saying. Remember, the main point here is we're building a system that we think is scalable and we think the architecture makes sense both from a technical perspective, from an economic perspective, and the incentives align so that it can scale. The technology can scale because you don't require knowledge from you know, different chains to understand what's going on. You don't have to coordinate between you know, new logic between validators and main chain and different side chains. All of this comes with an interoperability protocol and everyone paid automatically, autonomously in the decentralized framework, truly decentralized framework. We talk about it, and to us, it's, it's a big deal because this is the whole point of blockchain. Uh, I don't think that the market quite understands how big of a deal it is because there, there's for sure a valid trade-off in the interim between you know, semi-decentralization and decentralization. But long-term, there's no comparison. The public internet would not exist today if, if it were not an open permissionless system. And that's exactly the, the analog here that we're building is an open permissionless system. 